Okay, I'm working on a web banner. Um, here's the old one that I did. It's for a radio station website. You'll see here this little flash banner animation. It's a rotating banner, so you see the image, and then after a few seconds, it fades out and fades into the next one. You can see it's got country music stars. Um, and I need to do another one for another radio station website, but I need to use older, old school country music stars, right? So um, I'm going to show you how I'm going to go through this process. I'm going to do it using Photoshop and Flash. So what I'm doing is, first thing I'm doing in Photoshop is I've got this file, and I've got all of my country music stars that I'm lining up for this. You'll see here, um, I've got them all in separate layers, and I've removed the background from the images so that I'll be able to put them into Flash and I'll have no background. So you see here, here are my country music stars, and um, you can see the checkerboard in the background because uh, there's no background image. So that's the process I'm going through. Now, this is kind of a small file, but my banner is going to be small. So on my Flash banner, I'm going to do it the same size as this other one. See, this is kind of a, a small little banner for a website. If I click on my background layer in Flash, I'm using Flash CS3, the size of my document is 500 wide by 80 pixels tall. So in Photoshop, I've created a file. If you go to Image, uh, Canvas Size, you'll see that my image is 120 wide pixels wide by 80 pixels tall. This is canvas size that I'm looking at, right? So I've got the same size images in Photoshop that I'm going to have in Flash. And that'll be nice because that means I won't be bringing in super large images into my Flash document unnecessarily. Okay, so time for our next country music star. And I'll walk you through the process I just did. Waylon Jennings. So we'll look at another one. All right. Here is Loretta Lynn. This one's going to be a little more difficult because, um, well, because she's not distinct from the background. But I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. What I'm going to do here is, there's a lot of ways you could do this. Um, I can double click on the background layer to unlock it. Just click OK. So now I've unlocked her from the background layer. Well, what does that mean? Well, I could just go now if I wanted to. I could just erase. Let's see here. I could erase. Uh-oh, looks like I have, why, how come I'm not erasing? Well, I probably have a selection. Let's see here. Select, deselect. Ah, now I can erase. So what I could do is, I could just erase the background away from her, and then when I get close to her head, get a smaller brush and do some fine detail work. Another way you could do this is by getting your quick selection tool in CS3. Okay, and what you could do is um, just click on the stuff that you want. Okay, so I want her, right? So I'm clicking on her face here. I'm clicking and dragging. I'm holding the mouse down. And I'm just dragging. And you can see now that I've now I have select selected mostly her. Okay, I'm missing a few parts here, so I'll just hold down and, and select this, the mic, and her fingers. You see now that I've with the click with the quick selection tool, I have been able to select most of her. Then I can click refine edge, and if I wanted to, with the refine edge tool, I can look at this in a bunch of different ways and decide if I want to expand my selection a little bit. Okay, I could do that. Um, I could uh, feather it a little bit more if I wanted on the edge. I could smooth it and uh, change the radius. Anyway, I'll click OK. That looks good. Okay, and I've got the selection. Now what I can do is click on my uh, layer mask button right here, add layer mask, and it'll automatically put in my layer mask. So notice over here on my layers window, I've got white for reveal, black is conceal, and so we're concealing the background part now. Now if I want to, I can go in with my brush and paint either black or white to um, fix this up some more. So I'm going to paint black here and see if I can maybe remove some of this stuff from her, away from her hair. I'm seeing this. Do I need all of that right there, right? Maybe that's not really her, right? Maybe that's just the background image getting caught in. So I'll zoom in a little bit and expand out my window. And I'm going to paint with black. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller by clicking on the bracket. 
right? There's your mic. Right? But this is not her, right? That's something else. And so I don't need this. Just get, get rid of this. And I'm painting, what I'm doing is I'm painting black. And it's taking away, it's concealing. So I'm painting in my mask area, actually, is what I'm doing. If I click here, I'm actually painting over there. So if you wanted to see the mask in action, all you got to do is control click on the mask. No, shift, shift, alt, click on the mask. And you can see your transparent red ruby lith um, sign. See the little pink area is a sign. And then she's got maybe her sleeve here. So we'll just do this. And if I wanted to, just do that. And I can get a bigger brush and paint out the rest of this. Okay. All right, zoom out, control minus, and that's looking pretty good. That's going to work, especially considering how small this is going to be on the um, on the website, right? It's just going to be a little image. Okay, so now that I'm good, all I have to do is get a selection of this and then uh, get this selection and put it into my other document. So what I'm going to do is sh uh, Alt-click on my mask. Oh, that just shows me mask. Oh, look at that. You can see after I, when I alt clicked right on the mask that I've got these problems here. So I'm going to paint black right here and fix this up a little bit nicer. All right, my mask. There's my mask. That looks pretty good. Let's see here. I'll alt click on the mask again. All right, and then shift click on the mask. Nope, that's not it. Control click on the mask. There you go. Control click right on the mask turns it into a selection. And then I'm actually going to click on the image not on the mask. And control C to copy. And then I'll open up my other window. And control V to paste. Alright, and paste it in here at the bottom. I'm going to drag it up to the top. Alright, and it doesn't look like it pasted in, but it did. If I get my move tool, my selection tool, and start dragging, there she is. Alright, so I'll hit control T on my keyboard for free transform, control T. And then I can hold down my shift key while I click and drag from the corner to make this a lot smaller. And here she comes. So okay, that's looking pretty good. Now I'm not sure if that's going to be good enough. I think so. I think so. I want it to be yeah, that's about it. So now when I'm happy with it, um, I'm going to hit enter, and that completes the transformation. And now I've got her in here along with my other country music stars. She's the latest one. And I'll be eventually dropping these guys into Flash um, for my web banner. So this is the end of part one. I'm just preparing my images in Photoshop and putting them all in separate layers, all my country music stars, and they've been separated from the background. And uh, so anyway, that's stage one.